So I just found out that I'm not hot. And this was based on a really humbling experience where I'm trying to get four men together to help me move a really heavy object from point A to point B. Not, not a far point A to point B either. And I can't do it. It can't be done. I'm in hell. I've tried for days, texting every man I know. Can you please come help me move this heavy thing? It's a piece of granite, by the way. I think we can use that as a gauge. Number one, can you get a group of men to help you move a heavy object from point A to point B? Number two, how far can you get them to move it? Because what I need is a piece of granite moved about 15 feet. Cannot gather four men to do that. Oh, I can't. I'm going to be hung over that day. Oh, I can't. Football is on. That's a crazy excuse. Wham. Number one, they don't make men like they used to. Because how come nobody wants to be helpful? Little helpless old me? You want me to pick up the granite slab? Why? You're not being helpful. Number two, I need to level up. I need to level up. I have. I need to get hotter. I don't feel like a hot woman would have an issue with this at all. She'd have that granite moved. She'd have a kitchen island. No, she might. If she's a strong and independent woman, this is the problems that modern women are running into. Why don't you just call somebody to do it, right? You don't need no man. We need to give. Mm -hmm. And what if the person that you need to give to won't let you? Mm -hmm. That happens all the time. Mm. They won't receive and value, appreciate, encourage, celebrate the things that we most need to give. And this is what happens with men a lot, that they'll, they have all this to give to us. And we're like, no, I can do it myself. No, I don't need that. Well, but you have to do it like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they, they want to be received from, they want to be seen, they need to be appreciated, they need to feel liked. Like, if we have a whole list of what to change about them. Speaking facts. That's facts. Then you don't like me just the way I am. Mm -hmm. Bridget Jones' diary. He likes me just the way I am. Yeah. That we both need it. I mean, it's odd. In this way, men and women are more alike mm -hmm. than different. Exactly. And men keep on saying, well, you actually don't like me. All you want me for is my money. And modern women continue to say, well... I'm not, I'm not going to change for you, but you need to change for me. We need to change for each other. No, it doesn't work that way. Are you insane? Because since everybody's in an uproar, what happens to the men that will pay you to take a day off from work? So you could just go do nothing with that. You know, I got to go do something. You want to come do something with me? You don't even know what something is, but you like, I got to work. Come on, man, I'll pay you. I'll Focus pay you on my purpose. Rate. What's up? <laughs> Men are so deep. And one of the myths is that they're superficial. But we don't realize we're, we're cutting them off at the tip of the tip of the iceberg. And there's so much in there. And feelings, which we always want them to talk about, they're, <laughs> that's deep sea diving. You gotta wait and wait and wait, sometimes days. Like you can think about this and get back to me. It's worth waiting for. Tell us all about how they feel. And some women don't get it. They call themselves emotionally intelligent, emotionally available, but emotionally intelligent and emotionally available would allow space for somebody else's feelings. It would allow them to explore maybe what they don't understand. Maybe not so much on their own time, because like if you're in a relationship, then communication has to be and is a thing. So you can't take forever. But there's a lot of times where modern women or women in general will ask a man to give her space. Just allow me to feel how I want to feel. Allow me to process these feelings. And the man has to back off. And then they come and hopefully they talk about it. But when a man has to process something and he says, OK, let, give me some give me some time. All of a sudden it's a problem. It needs to be talked about now. And you're not getting any space. And that frustrates a man. And a man, because you want him to say something to you, gives you what you want. But it's not the deepest part of the truth. He hasn't been able to actually process it because you haven't given him time. So you're going down a path that really is not what he really feels, but he just gave you an answer because you wouldn't leave him alone. And that's the problem with a lot of modern women today is they want the space, but they don't give a man space. And so they're going off of 
their assumptions and partial information and they just fester on it. They sit on it and they make stuff up in their head and they end up ruining relationships because of this nonsense. I have no roster. I have no, I don't talk to boys and I have some bad news for you. That is because ladies and gentlemen, I am a lover girl. <laughs> Unfortunately, I am a hardwired to the core lover girl. In order for me to fall in love with you, you just got to respond once. Okay. So in order to prevent that, I have to close it off. Okay. I got to just keep them at a distance. But I am the friend who's going to be like, yes, be in your man eater era. Man eater. Okay. This video. Bad it's advice, for but okay. The women that say they are single, but looking for a long term relationship, looking for a partner, looking for marriage, and you've not had success. There is a reason for this. And I don't know how else to say this, but the problem is you. I talk to so many single guys that are truly looking for long term relationships. They want partners, they want marriage, they want family. And it's the women that are the problem. This is why you're the problem. You can't have it both ways. You can't like have your master's degree, your MBA, earning high six figures, being really independent, doing your thing, and at the same time say you want a provider. Like those two things, you know, like they don't really make sense. Like you can't have like your career, earn all this money. What I do is on my own, I get to keep. And then this guy who earns, has to earn more money than me or at least as much as me, and his money goes to our family and I get to keep whatever I get to keep. Like there's this weird mindset in dating and women where they're like feminists, but they also have this traditional family values that they kind of grew up believing that that's what they want, or that's what they say they want. And their two are just not, you know, they're not making sense. Yeah, I talked about this a little bit in one of my other videos where uh, some women will compare a man to their dad, uh, but they won't, they don't take the worst parts of their dad. They just say, I remember my dad as this, 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 and this, and you have to be this, 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 and this, like the positives, the pros, but that doesn't really give a man space to be any of the cons, any of the negatives. Number one, number two, you put out of your mind how to handle the negatives. You remember the negatives, but you just don't care about them in your mind. It's, it's sort of a fantasy because in your mind, you're thinking, well, I can just, if I can just find a man that takes all of the bad stuff, like I, I can convince him to put off all the bad stuff and then I can just keep the good stuff from what I've learned, then everything will be great. And that's a trap because now you're trying to change him. And that's sometimes how you can run into a Chad or like a, one of the, one of these guys that you know, is toxic for you because he's got some good traits, but then he's got like that, that mysterious bad side to him. So you get in trouble like that. And this is essentially the same thing. <laughs> You're looking for a guy that is going to allow you to take all your money, spend it on yourself, be the boss, babe, be the feminist, just run after your career, only be a mom whenever you want to. You don't have to cook and clean unless like you're really feeling it. I could just follow you and support you sort of thing. But when you get tired of doing that, then you want to take the cons and throw them in the trash. No, you chose this lifestyle. So it's both the pros and the cons. So before you get into the lifestyle, you have to say, OK, I absolutely love the pros. Now, can I deal effectively with the cons, assuming that they're not too toxic? So you can't have this world where this is what life looks like. Like we're not in the 50s, you know, you have a career, you earn money, you're doing well, that's amazing. So to then go and say that you will not date someone that makes a little less money than you, like I don't understand the thinking in that. Because together you two are going to be a partnership Together, you will be earning a lot more money and contributing to the household, contributing to the family, to kids, schools, all that kind of stuff. Like it's not on the man to 100% provide that while you get to still have your career and, you know, do whatever. Like that doesn't make sense. That's not a partnership. That's not marriage. 
I don't know what that is, but that's not what men are looking for. You're a grown, a glorified child at that point in time. Like you've just, you still have the child mentality and a grown up body. So now essentially, because he's taking care of everything, he's like a parent without being a parent. Does that make sense? Like he'll provide for everything. But when I was younger, as a child, my parents wouldn't let me do everything. But now that I'm older, I'm grown and I can do anything that I want. And I have somebody to sponsor me. So it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> and I hear this from women every single Delusional. Day. They make a ton of money. They are at the top of their careers and they will not even think about going out with a guy who is a teacher, which is, listen, if that, if you don't want to do that, that's on you. But if there's an amazing man who makes a little bit less money than you and will treat you like a queen, give you the family that you want, will give you everything that you want, but you have to work together financially to make those dreams come true. That is a partnership. That's what you want. There's no white knight that's gonna come in sweep away all your financial woes. So if you haven't earned any money and you're like, oh, I need to like get with a guy in order to you know fund my lifestyle, that's a different thing and you own that. Like, you know what I mean? Like if that is your truth, you own it, that's what's gonna happen, great, okay. And then you make some concessions somewhere else. Like he doesn't have to be the hottest guy in the world because like you need like someone that's gonna help you financially. You know what I mean? Like be honest about where you're at. But if you are a woman who's, you know, making good money, a good career, you have to consider someone who's maybe in a different kind of career path because listen, women, men statistically make more money when they are in relationships, especially when they're married, when there are commitments and dependents, they won't earn more money, they'll figure it out. So if today he's not making 10X what you're making, if that's okay, like you're letting go so many good guys and are staying single in your 30s and 40s and 50s. And it's like um, uh, the lady on Cam Newton's show, Dr. Brian, I think it was, she said the exact same thing about men. When men get into a relationship, statistically speaking, um, sometimes, they, most of the time, they don't know what's going on. Like, they're not prepared for anything. But then once the child comes, once the baby comes, and they have, like, an actual family, they're like, oh, crap. I, I really got to get it together. I got to figure it out. And they usually rise to the occasion. And so that's when they start making more money because they have more people to depend on and they have more mouths to feed. So even when they're tired, they were like, man, <laughs> I am tired, but I'm not about to go to sleep because then my baby's not going to eat. <laughs> so if you would get with a man, you know, obviously he doesn't have to be so far below what you're looking for. But like she said, there are plenty of good men out there that are maybe not making six figures, but they are making pretty good money. These men are supervisors. They're managers in their respective fields. Does that not require some sort of intelligence, some sort of hustle? But these modern women don't think that way. And I see it every single day. And a lot of women aren't having kids and they're dying to have families, but they're letting go really good guys because they're not this like provider that they have in their mind when we don't live in the 50s. So if you really truly want a relationship, that's a partnership, reconsider your like characteristics of what you're looking for. Because if you're only dating based on a guy's net worth, then that is not dating from a place of values. You're not gonna meet your soulmate like that. It's not gonna happen. You're just gonna meet an ATM. And that's what you want, then be honest. Be honest about it, then you don't want a soulmate. You don't want partnership, you don't want marriage. You want someone to fund you. So be upfront, honest about what you're looking for. If you really want a family and you know, you're getting to your mid thirties, you need to think about, you know, what, what's that guy going to look like? What's, you know, what's his financial status? It might not be exactly where we want it to be, but he'll get there. And together, can you guys fulfill your dreams together as a couple? That's what's more important. So I don't know who needed to see this video, but I hear it every day and I see more and more women not having kids because the time has passed up and they're still hoping to meet this, you know, hot guy in finance who's going to solve all their problems. And it hasn't happened yet. And I don't think it's going to. So comment if you agree with me. If you have any other tips you want to add on or any thoughts. But I feel so passionate about this because I don't want to see so many single people really feeling it and really feeling like hopeless and dating because it's completely in your control. No, that's the long and short of it. Uh, good analysis, good breakdown. And essentially the same thing that a lot of men have been saying about modern women, about strong, independent women. They 
know what reality is, but they still find a way to put their heads in the clouds. They still find a way to ignore all of that. And they say to themselves, I'm so unique that he's just going to come for me. I'm so unique that this man who is literally in front of my face, entertaining 10 to 15 women, literally, he's going to see my value and how unique I am and how much of a challenge I am. And he's going to say, this is the one I want to conquer because I love a challenge. All of these other ladies, they're too easy. They're too, uh, I think docile is the right word. They just, just go along with anything I want. But you know what I want? I want a crocodile. I want somebody that is going to bite my head off for no apparent reason, just because they hate me. That's what I want. I want a bull in a china shop. That's what I'm looking for. That's who I'm looking to raise my kids. I'm looking for a snake to bite me on my behind when I'm in the shower. That's I, I love that. I got to have that. All these other women, best friends, want to do everything for me. <laughs> That's dumb. I hate that. I'm looking for an eagle to fly up out the sky. Grab me by his talons, take me up in the sky and just drop me. That's the type of treatment that I'm looking for from my girl. And it's going to be a challenge for me. To try to figure out how to stay alive. I'm loving that. It's drama every day. And then we're going to post on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. Ooh, it's been 10 to 15 years. We didn't had our ups and downs, but we made it. We was almost to the breaking point. Went to divorce court a few times, but God is the greatest and to God be the glory. This is real love. No, it's not stupid. That's foolishness. That's stupidity. And it seems like not until you get into your 50s or 60s that you learn the lesson to stop acting a darn fool. Men don't want that. So I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate it. Keep on pumping out this content because these modern women need to hear it. But that's just my opinion. Until the next video, I'm out.